Hi, I'm Damon Bonser, founder of British Design Fund, and I'm joined today by Jack Corns from uh, Housepot. Nice to see you, Jack. How are you doing? Hi, Damon. Yeah, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, look, this is just a, a quick Q&A so, uh, so our investors and our audience can get to learn a bit about you and the team and, and what's going on at Housepots. Um, so let's we kick off. Do you want to tell us all a little bit about yourself? Sure. So um, personally wise, um, then my background is all in, in commercial and sales. I spent the first part of my career selling big mainframe computers at uh, the IT giant. This is IBM. Uh, and actually, that was kind of what really sparked my need for starting my own business and getting involved in housebots. Um, the, the story goes that my co-founder, Harry, who's the CTO on the project, was being asked by his parents to paint his living room. Uh, and he was up there dangling off a ladder, thinking to himself that, blimey, I've got an engineering degree. It's, it's uh, the 21st century there's got to be a better way of, of doing this and not putting myself at danger and boredom. Uh, so he went off and as a bit of fun, came up with our very first prototype for a wall climbing and painting robot and didn't really think much of it past then. Um, whilst I was uh, at the same time I was working, I was, as I say, selling computers at, at IBM. Um, I was kept on seeing uh, a need for increased automation, and especially with the products that IBM was selling was increased automation of really quite high skilled labor. So we were selling all sorts of crazy AI and machine learning based packages, mainly to banks and things like that. Um, but for some reason, there wasn't that kind of next step into, um, especially in, in, in the area that we're interested in, in construction, of bringing automation into the kind of dangerous and dirty jobs. Uh, and so that was kind of my eureka moment was sat there realizing how much money was being spent on automation and not really having a product out there for the dangerous and dirty task of, of working at height. Um, just so happened that Harry and I have, have uh, known each other since we were about 13 years old. So over a beer, um, one day, uh, as all good businesses start, then we decided it was the right time to, to start Housebots and start with our mission of, of using robotics to protect and maintain the built environment. Great, yeah. And do you want to tell, so do you want to tell who else, so aside from you and Harry, who else is, uh, is in the team? And, and what do they what, what sort of what are the key roles you've got covered at the moment sure so we're we're basically a 100 percent engineering team at the moment apart from myself um harry obviously um co-founder cto we've got uh, three other full-time members of staff um jenna mike and gabe um all of them have a background in, in quite deep academia in in robotics with um mike and jenna both being master's graduates from um very well respected universities um, so at the moment, it's kind of a, an engineering and research team, uh, and I look after the, the business side of the equation. What, so, and, and what so far would you say has been your biggest challenge? Like what's been the hardest thing? Um, I think the, the hardest thing I would say, especially in, in um, uh, the industry of robotics, is helping people understand that now is the time for robotics. Um, what I mean by that, and interestingly, it's been helped by COVID, is that you know, robotics in the factory have been around since you know the 50s and 60s with with car manufacturing plants, um, but only recently have robots actually become good enough, accessible enough to really leave these settings and enter the wider world. Uh, and quite often when you show your products or show these, you know, non-industrial robots to clients, they're, they're often a little bit starstruck. Um, uh, and, and with the, the backdrop of COVID uh, has kind of just given uh, that more of an impetus for people to sit back and really think, OK, wow, now is actually the time that these robots are coming out of the factories and into our lives. And we really need to start listening to them. Um, so, yeah, in, in a roundabout way, kind of helping people through that jump has been probably the biggest challenge especially in the early days of engaging with our customers yeah and people's perceptions of what a robot is i mean everyone like you said they have these uh, ideas of these huge things uh, building cars in factories whereas actually they're all they are they yeah. are very rapidly coming out of the factory and, and, and um, joining joining our everyday lives exactly yeah that's it um, and then what's uh, what's on the sort of horizon for housebots this year what are the what are the big big sort of headline achievements you want to get under the belt through 2021 
Sure. So we've we've only recently uh, signed off and finalised our kind of version one ready system. Uh, so right now we're in active trials with our first um, early adopter clients, if you like. Um, one of them being the UK's largest painting and decorating company. Another one being one of the main inspection contractors for Highways England. Um, so really over the next, especially six months, will be intense trialing and testing of that first you know, demonstrable ready unit so that we can hopefully um, uh, emerge uh, by the end of this year in a place that we can uh, officially launch the product to, to a wider area. So really hands on and working closely with with a small set of our fantastic customers to make sure they're as happy as they can be. And we solve the biggest problem we can is, is the main focus for this year. Yeah, great. Um, and just to wrap up, do you want to kind of just just if there are um, people watching this, maybe maybe kind of potential customers or know people, uh, what is your what's the sweet spot for for this year? Like the the ideal customer for house spots, what do they look like? Sure. So um, in uh, the robot itself, uh, and to kind of take a little bit of a step back, then the robot itself, the clever thing is is how it climbs and sticks up uh, sticks to walls. Um, our unique and patent pending technology means that the robot can climb really rough surfaces, overcome some obstacles, uh, which means it's a perfect climber for real world situations where you find, you know, rendered buildings or concrete columns, things like this. Uh, so we're focusing on two use cases, the first one being painting and the second one being inspection. Um, what that means is that our ideal client right now is either a contractor specializing in one of those two areas. So somebody like um, the Bell Group, who are one of our main um, customers at the moment, who are a painting and decorating specialist contractor uh, or not on the contractor side, but asset owner side as well. So we've been engaging a lot with some of the highways agencies and large owners of buildings, housing associations, things like that. Um, so that there really are two kind of sweet spots for, for clients to work with. Yeah. Jack, that's that's great. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thanks a lot for your time. And uh, look, we're, we're really happy to be supporting you and uh, look forward to working with you and seeing, seeing everything exciting that happens with house spots this year. No problem. You too, Devin. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Jack. Cheers.